Hi, and welcome to this journey into the murky depths of retro benchmarking. So recently, when I was tweeting on Twitter, uh, Twitter is something I just joined a couple of months ago. I have to confess, I don't really get it much, but I think I'm too old. But anyway, I got a message from a really nice guy called Neil, who used to be an IT pro back in the day, and he was telling me, about all the, the machines and stuff they used to use. And I think I'd done a video with some benchmarking on it that he'd seen. And he was talking about benchmarking and said that they used to benchmark a lot of systems. And they used to use a suite of stuff called HL Bench and that he thought he still had it. And he did indeed. He went and dug it out and sent it over. So I thought that'd be quite cool to get some extra benchmarking stuff just so you could kind of mix it up a little bit instead of just playing the same benchmarks over. Some of you may have seen recently, I built a few sort of beige boxes to cover a range of generations. And I thought that they would be a good place to sort of test this out. So we've got a 286. I think it's a 12 megahertz. We've got a 38640. We've got a 486DX266. And we've got a Pentium 90. So we'll see how these benches fare with those machines. So it's all loaded up on the 286 now, and here we can see this sort of mix of files. There's all the HL stuff, which is the HL Bench Suite, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Now this does really run back into the 80s, so I tried this out just a quick test on my Pentium 166 MMX laptop, and that machine proved to be too recent for a lot of these things. So it goes to show you this really is kind of probably... Well, Neil kind of suggested that maybe up to 386, but we'll, we'll see if we can push it through 486 into the early Pentium era and see how it goes. So firing up the HL Bench XE, we come to this screen. So PC Tech Journal System Benchmarks, 1988, copyright to Ziff Communications. So I wondered if Ziff Communications were the same as Ziff Davis, who I was familiar with because they're kind of a magazine publishing company. And indeed, they are the same company, so... I, I kind of wondered why Ziff Davis would produce software. They they run a lot of um, websites and things now, sort of magazine, paper magazines are kind of gone out the door a little bit. So they've got a whole portfolio of websites that probably familiar with all sort of tech orientated. And they're still in benchmarking as well. They own Ookla, the speed test for checking your broadband connection which a lot of people are probably familiar with anyway i went digging through my my retro magazine stash to see if i could find any ziff davis publications and sure enough i found this um pc magazine and just leafing through it i guess that they always published benchmarking software because they did a lot of benchmarking in these magazines so you know they had to it doesn't actually tell you what they use when they sort of do their reviews but there's a little sort of benchmark at the bottom to give you a rough idea of performance and I presume that this is why they had the software so that their own journalists could run benches. Anyway I decided to have a quick look at the the cover disc on this magazine which was there and sure enough uh, they I kind of wondered wouldn't you put your own benchmarking software on your cover discs and there it is right there so I've even got some more recent sort of maybe Windows 98 benchmarking software right under my nose that I've had all this time that I could have been using so that was quite interesting. Anyway, I digress. So back to the HL bench and what we've got here is information. So I'll have a quick flick through here and see what kind of benchmarks we've got. So we've got a series of more than two dozen tests grouped into six modules. Now we've got text scrolling and graphics modes, I guess, just drawing stuff and generating and sorting integers to test the CPU speed. Uh, chuck some complex maths at the floating point unit, checks the disk speed, and then it displays the results by the looks of it. And you can save a data file, which is cool. So after each run, you should be able to save a data file and do some comparisons. So we can select the option to describe the system and put some details in about this 286, 12 megahertz CPU, 8 megahertz floating point unit, uh, Mega and a half RAM, uh, 256K Oak VGA card, and then we've got Windows 3.11 and DOS 2.21. And once that's there, we'll save a data file for the 286, so we can move that around on a floppy disk from one machine to the other, and 
all that remains is to click on the button that says run all of these tests. So we're into the text test first, so it just looks like she's just scrolling, typing, and I guess it's just seeing how fast it can handle all of that. I like the little quotes that it types out, it's quite funny. So I don't know what that is, like window text or text editing, overwriting maybe. Certainly very pretty. <laughs> I guess it's uh, just seeing how the graphics card handles color processing or something. I don't know. Uh, into the graphics stuff. It did say, I think, in the blurb at the beginning that it runs at the the best, the highest mode that it can deal with. So it's probably 256 color VGA. Then it was graphs, generating graphs, it said. So I'm not quite sure whether that does actual sort of computations or whether it's just a display test. And that must be the data, so created data. And then I guess it's just filtering through it and finding stuff and fetching stuff. So I guess it just generates chunk of data, indexes it, and then just sees how quickly it can find stuff on your hard drive. And generating reports. So it's quite kind of different. I don't know whether this would be kind of more of a business-oriented sort of Serious benchmarking, certainly not a gaming benchmark. Okay, so this is where you can compare with reference machines. It says there's an IBM file in there, but there doesn't appear to be anything in it. There's an old 286 that I was messing about with earlier. So if we have a look at the comparison, there's nothing to compare with, but you can see the bench has recorded. And in the graphical display, you get the same information basically, but it's displayed as a graph. So it'll be interesting to see how that looks when we move on to the next machine. Okay, we're on the 386 now. So this machine's a little bit different in that it has IBM PC DOS 5, as we can see here in the DOS shell. And the first thing we'll do is we'll pop a floppy disk in and we'll copy our 286.12 file into the test folder so that we've got something to compare with this time. And then we'll just go to the main menu and hit the run all above tests button. And then we'll just let that fly through. I won't bother boring you with watching it all again, as funky and colourful as it is. Um, might have another look at the end when we run the Pentium to see if there's like a discernible speed difference. Just a visual one. And we'll create our file for this machine. So this one is an AMD 386DX40. It has a coprocessor, which is a DX33, an Intel DX33837. Four megabytes of RAM, and it's got a Trident TVGA 8900G. I'm trying to remember what's in these machines. So one good thing about this is it's going to create a permanent record of the contents of these boxes. So I'm having to go through them and check the the post and things as I go along to try and remember what's actually in the machines. I'm save it out as a data file and then we're ready to do our first real comparison between my 286 and my 386.
So looking at the graphical one, first of all, you can see that it, it diffs the two and it gives you a percentage performance increase. So between the two, it's quite disturbing things on there. So the 386 generally is faster. So the fastest is 286%. So that's nearly three times faster. That's floating point. And disk performance is one and a half times as fast. Text scrolling is 100% faster. Windows scrolling is 137% faster. But disturbingly, the graphics is only 67% of the 286. So that's one good thing about doing these. It's telling me that I've got a serious problem with the graphics card in this machine. It's totally underperforming, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to have to do something about that. Then I'll be able to run it again and hopefully see an improvement after I put a better graphics card in there. And then there's the textual, textual pardon me, representation of the the graphics that we've just seen. So I guess you get both options so that you can print them out and stuff like that and it's just easier to store and read rather than having loads of graphs kicking around. I wasn't going to, but there are some other tools on the this sort of collection of stuff, so I'll have a quick flick through them now with the 386. So familiar stuff, we've got the landmark CPU speed test, which is part of Phil's computer lab DOS bench suite, so we've seen that before. Um, but there's a very old version, very old version. So just dealing with this 386, it just can't. It doesn't recognize it. It's saying that it's 17.5 megahertz and its performance relative to a 4.77 megahertz PC is 10.9 times. So it's I think it's basically gone off the scale here. I think it um, only runs up to 17 odd megahertz and it can't deal with anything faster. So it goes to show you the age of some of this stuff. Another app in there is PC Status, which we're running. And again, I think this machine is probably a bit too far in the future for this because it's 1985, this. I like the way that some of this old software, you know, sort of autographed by the, the guy who wrote it, John D. Falconer. And this is just reading stuff out of the machine. So the reports, some memory information and addresses, keyboard buffer size and such. It's got the correct version of DOS, though I imagine DOS 5 was possibly in the future as far as this software was concerned doesn't seem to be able to read what the graphics card is capable of i don't think so possibly a bit old for all of that stuff but interesting um we'll probably go back to this and run it on an 8086 at some point go through the suite again and then there's a zenith benchmark which seems to be just running off the clock on the cpu gives you a result in ticks reminiscent of doom and then it looks like we've got quite an old version of system info here sysinfo si system information version 3 1984 to 1986 peter norton well hey i think yeah, i'm sure that is the guy who did norton antivirus and everything isn't it i'm not sure but yeah there you go so that is just giving you some basic info. Then we've got Core Disk Performance Test Program version 2.4, 1986. Then we've got VSI, Visual System Information. So this is quite a cool little thing. So you've got a kind of diagrammatic view of your PC. So BIOS date, November 92, DOS version 5. It recognizes as a maths coprocessor, gives you little drawings of your machine. So 80 by 25 color. So again, this is probably under reading everything. So it thinks it's an AT and it's probably, I don't know, is that 80 by 25? Is that CGA? I don't know whether that's the color that's actually rendering this app in in cga mode or whether it's trying to read the graphics card to see what the maximum mode that it can deal with is or not but yeah it's a pretty cool graphical representation of the machine okay 486 next so same as before drag that 386 data file across onto this machine and we'll create an information file for it so this is a 486 it's actually an overdrive DX266 and it has 8 megs of RAM, 
and it's got uh, a S3 based spare V7 Mirage VLB graphics card and same I think all these machines have apart from the IBM one have DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.11 and we're off so that shot through and the results are back and yeah we can see a healthy jump all over for the 486 over the 386 and bear in mind it's quite a fast 386 as well the 40 megahertz one but look at that so everything's kind of over 200 percent apart from disc performance which you know just similar discs in all of them so you kind of expect that but this time in the graphics 392 percent so it's 400 percent faster so it is definitely highlighted only need to do something with that 386 graphics card but everything else is in to over 200 percent increase and floating point is way above so that's sort of four and a half times faster Okay, we'll get that saved as a as a data file and then we'll transfer that over to the final machine and see how the Pentium does. And I'm not sure how this is going to work with the Pentium. So our same old, same old. Copied the data file over on a floppy disk from the 486 and set it away. Now I'm going to show it this time because if you compare it with what happened on the 286, the jump is quite remarkable, really. Yeah, blinking, you miss it. <laughs> so, because to show you just what a big jump it was into the Penti mirror, especially like coming from sort of 386 and 486. But uh, yeah, wow, <laughs> that, that went super fast. And just the results are yeah big so they're pretty much looking at four times five times even eight times that's the cpu sort speed eight times so it's just what a jump it was floating point 528 uh, percent just even disk performance is slightly better but i think that's probably because it's a bigger slightly more modern hard drive uh, i'm not quite sure about the seat times and stuff on those, I should have probably paid more attention. But yeah, everything is up. 400% for text, 550 for Windows, 332 for graphics. So yeah, an impressive leap in to the modern era. That's a wrap, as they say. So that was fun. It was kind of pointless comparing the machines, but it was interesting to, to do anyway. But the value in doing this kind of thing is it's it's clearly pointed out a problem in a specific area i.e graphics on my 386 and i need to look into that see whether it's the graphics card hopefully it's not the motherboard or something but it's being resoundingly beaten by a lesser card in the 286 so it definitely needs addressed i'm not getting the best out of that machine so it's cool it's revealed something useful that i need to look into and thank you neil for sending that stuff over it was interesting hearing about all that old IT kind of stuff and getting to run some of that software that was used by the professionals back in the day and I hope everybody else enjoyed watching it as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll join me on the next video and until then, goodbye.